In this video, we're going to start talking about predictive analytics, where we start trying to determine what's going to happen in the future. And the concept that we want to grab onto right now is, is the idea of probability. Uh, because if I can calculate the probability of the chance of something happening, then from a business standpoint, that can be very valuable to me. Once again, if I just know the chance of it happening or the probability, then I can plan for it. All right, so what we're going to do now is I, I want to work into this idea of probability and just go over the concepts of some of the probability rules. You will probably, you will remember this hopefully from your uh, stats class and, and probability. And the point that is being made on this slide is that um, if you can ever just determine the potential outcomes, then we start moving into a good place for probability. Okay, so let's say you're in marketing. You know that there are two possible outcomes if, uh, if you call a client. Okay, one option is they answer the phone. The other option is they don't answer the phone. All right, now we're beginning to put together this big idea that what are the outcomes that could happen in business. If I'm in marketing, I call, they say yes, yeah, they either answer the phone call or they don't answer the phone call. First probability um, concept that comes in is the complement rule. Complement rule says that if I know all of the outcomes and I can calculate or I know from previous statistics, the probability of them answering the phone is 40%. The complement rule says if I know that 40% is answering the phone, then the complement to that is, they won't answer the phone, is 60%, right? So the complement rule says that if I know all of the different outcomes, that's 100%. If I know 40% are going to answer, complement says 60% of the time they won't answer. Okay, let's take it just a little bit further. Let's make it a little bit more complex. Now let's talk about conditional probability. And the way we write conditional probability uh, in this textbook and with most uh, prob uh, probability stats books looks like this. It says, what's the probability that A will happen given that B has already happened? All right. What is the probability that A will happen given that B already has happened? Here's an example. What's the probability that you make the sale given that the customer answers the phone? All right. This is the overall outcome given that something else happens. This symbol here says this is the and, probability of A and B. This is the probability of B. This is the way the book takes and lays out everything out for you. It, it puts them in these symbols. I think that oftentimes this confuses the students. I recommend instead of going through and trying to learn all of the different symbols, draw a picture of what's happening. If you can draw a picture of all of the day of all of the events that are occurring, it makes it so much easier for you to be able to go in and to determine what the what the uh, what the outcomes are. Okay, so once again. Um, we know from before, 40% chance that they'll answer, 60% chance that they won't. More data given. Probability is 0.3 or 30% that you will make a sale if you can talk to the customer. All right, here's the 0.3 that says that you can make the sale. That's what the yes is. 0.3 is yes, you made the sale, which means the complement rule is also in here. 30% chance you make the sale, 70% chance you don't make the sale. Now let's go down here to if they don't answer. Are you going to make the sale if they don't answer? Well, no. So there's a 100% chance that you won't make the sale if they don't answer. Now let's take and use just the uh, multiplication rule. We'll talk a little bit more about it in a minute. 0.4 times 0.3 says that there is a 12% chance that you are going to go across this path here. They answer you make the sale. 12% chance that they will, that you will make the sale on the, uh, uh, on the phone call. 0.4 times 0.7. 
there's a 28% chance that they're going to answer the phone, but you won't make the sale. There is a 0.6 times 1.0. There's a 60% chance they're not answering the phone, and so you're not going to make the sale. Okay, so now we have listed all of the different potential outcomes, and we can go back through now and back into the uh, conditional probability uh, using the book where the probability of answering and a sale, this path, which is 0.12, and the probability of them answering, and we know the probability of them answering from before is 0.4. So once again, conditional probability that you are going to make the sale given that they answer the phone is 0.12 divided by 0.4. So this is a 30% chance, which is what we stated here, that you would make the sale based on uh, whether or not they answered the phone call. Again, you can use the book. You can use all of this uh, if you want. I highly recommend just put everything out here to where you can see it um, to move forward with it. Addition rule. This is example 4.2 in your book. The addition rule, uh, the example is you think that there's a 75% chance you're going to get an A in, a in stats. You think there's a 55% chance that you're going to get a B in, I'm sorry, that you're going to get an A in economics. You also think that there's about a 40% chance that you're going to get an A in stats and also an A in economics. The addition rule says, what is the chance that I'm going to get an A in stats, and then this symbol means or, an A in stats or an A in economics? Using the books, formulas, that's the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So the probability of getting an A in stats or an A in economics is 0.75 plus 0.55 minus 0 0.40, which is 0 0.90. Again, if you took and drew this out, um, you could also, it, you know, using the same tree type structure that we used before, you can get to the same answers without having to use all the formulas. Up to you. Uh, I think the formulas are oftentimes uh, very easy um, if you have all of the data, but if you're struggling trying to find the data, it, it becomes harder. Okay, multiplication rule, another concept here. This is example 4.4 in the book. The example that they're saying, yeah, that they're using is that there is a 14% chance that somebody sees your social media campaign and that they respond positively to it. Okay, let's draw a picture. The options are that they're either going to respond positively, positively to your social media or they're going to respond negatively to it. We know from the first data, positive is 0.14, which means from the complement, 1 minus, point, uh, 1 minus 0 0.14, 86% that they're not going to respond positively to your social media campaign. All right, next. Probability of becoming a loyal customer if positive social media responds. Okay, now this is a given this is a given uh, a conditional probability becoming a loyal customer, which is the long outcome, given that there's a positive social media response. Positive social media response, they're going to become a loyal customer, 0.24, which means using the complement rule again, even though you've got a positive social media then becoming a loyal customer is still one minus this, so there's still a 76% chance that they're not going to be a loyal customer even if they responded positively. Again, if back to the bottom part, if it was negative, then they're not going to become a loyal customer. So we know that 86% are going to fall into this category of uh, that they didn't respond positively to your social media which now also means that, uh, that they're not going to become a loyal customer. So finally, everything together, 0.14 times 0.24, sorry, 3.36% chance that you're going to get a loyal customer 
based on your social media. 10.64% chance that you had a positive interaction with your social media, but they still didn't become a loyal customer. And then the bottom one is they're not a loyal customer because they didn't have a, a positive um, replace, uh, outcome based on your social media. Again, if you can just draw this to where you can make sense of it, it's going to help you a ton in answering the questions. Finally, the last thing is on multiplication rule. Um, and it states that um, the concept of independent events. Independent events mean that one event really has nothing to do with the other event. So two events are considered to be independent if the probability of A, given that B has already occurred, is really nothing more than the probability of A. You probably remember the multiplication rule used most importantly whenever you were doing a, a coin toss. Um, and in a coin toss, it says, you know, I'm going to toss the coin the first time, okay, and that's a B has occurred. So I toss the coin the first time and it comes up hits. If I toss the coin again, does it matter what happened the first time I tossed the coin? And the answer is no, the coin has no memory. So they're independent events if the events have nothing to do with each other, um, such as in a coin toss. Again, probability of getting two heads in a row is exactly what we're thinking about on this. The coin has no memory. The probability of A, given that B's already occurred, really is nothing more than the probability of A. And we know from the multiplication rule, the probability of one thing happening and then the next thing happening is I take the probability of the first occurrence, multiply it times the probability of the second occurrence. Probability of getting heads is 0.5. The probability of getting heads the first time and then heads again on the second time is the probability of getting heads, which is 0.5, times the probability of getting heads. So 0.5 times 0.5 gives me 25% chance that I'll get heads twice in a row. Again, that's the idea of the multiplication rule. Hopefully this helps you um, get your ideas together on um, how we can use probability uh, to solve our business problems.